What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another video. And today, I want to talk about the gap between wedding filmmaking versus like higher production filmmaking, like movies, like music videos. And obviously, there's just a bigger crew in like movie making, music videos, etc. Those big budgets, you have bigger crew, you have like multiple cameramen, you have grip, you have all this stuff. And a lot of times in Wedding Filmmaker, it's just a solo shooter, or maybe two shooters, maybe three. And bigger budget, uh, higher end Wedding Filmmakers probably you know have a little bigger crew, maybe four or five guys, but you get the point. There is obviously the manpower element to the difference in bet between production of a wedding video and other higher production films. I guess when the Canon 5D Mark II was released, and finally, run and gun videographers had the opportunity to shoot with uh, manual settings, get all that bokeh and all that stuff. That is when wedding films went from like Uncle Bob's wedding video on his massive rocket launcher camcorder to like these more quote unquote YouTuber phrase filmic and cinematic type of wedding films. And in my opinion, I think. You know, obviously with new gear and all that stuff, the quality has gotten better. And with that, there's like a natural uh, increase in production value with wedding films. But still, in many ways, wedding films aren't even close to what higher end video production would look like. And by higher end, I don't mean like higher end corporate because a lot of times, all because people are paying a lot for corporate video, doesn't mean it looks good. It just looks corporate, if you know what I mean high key lighting, very bright, harsh, maybe not as diffused, things of that nature. But if you watch like a movie, you watch music videos these days, those productions are excellent, you know. Lighting is on point, everything is on point, you know. It's crazy stuff. And to be quite honest, a lot of those things are unattainable, you know, right now at least, like, it's quite unattainable for wedding videography. But at a surface level, if you look at what the main differences are with wedding videography versus wedding filmmaking. And some of you will say like, well, there's a camera. You know, a lot of these bigger budgets are using like Reds, Alexas and all that stuff, which is true. But in my opinion, the difference in like the image quality of all of these modern cameras, you're talking about Sony, Canon, you know, I guess Nikon too these days. And you compare them to like cinema cameras that are like $100,000. Like the image quality is like, so minute the dynamic range is like very minute like it takes like you to like pixel peep for three hours just to figure out like okay which one has this that and the other and you know we say all these things about color and all that stuff and you know those are all subjective things but in my opinion the biggest gap uh between high-end filmmaking and just wedding filmmaking and i'm not saying wedding filmmaking can't be high-end all i'm saying is like in terms of pr the production of it it's audio and it is lighting and in my opinion short from sticking like a boom mic all up in the bride and groom's face and stuff like that audio is almost like as good as it could possibly get for running gun wedding filmmaking meaning the obvious things right you might be efficient you might the groom some guys goes as far as micing the bride i haven't gotten to the point of feeling comfortable doing that yet uh, so as of right now, it's literally just tapping DJ's uh, booth or speaker, miking groom, miking efficient, and sometimes sticking a random like mic somewhere where you, you, no one can see it. But that is to extent of, you know, the average decent wedding filmmaker is doing in terms of audio. The other aspect is lighting. And unfortunately, there's a lot of guys out there who just don't light anything at all at a wedding and that is a travesty and that is idiotic and that is very dumb like get your head out your ass bring a light to your the reception at the very least okay that was me when i first started for like the first three weddings until i realized that i don't like my footage looking like straight mud butt after eating three days old indian food you have to light. So most or all half decent wedding filmmakers light. 
the reception and it ends there, right? You light the reception toast, you light the reception dancing, you light some of the dancing. And by lighting, I don't mean sticking a big ass LED light on your camera. I'm talking about backlighting, uh, key lighting the speaker with a nice backlight, things of that nature. Those are some of the things that wedding filmmakers are already doing. The only problem is that whole lighting aspect is pretty much neglected the rest of the day. The rest of the day we're dealing with natural light. We're dealing with, uh, for the most part, what we are given in the environment, right? In that way, it limits our production value. Photographers have flashes. Photographers have, you know, boxes. And we should also have lights ourselves. And I know a lot of guys, we are already carrying around those small pocket lights, like the bowling P ones of the world. And these lights are great, right? You want to have little accent lighting on um, jewelry. You want to have little accent lighting on the details. These lights are great, you know? Ring shots, you know, you shine the light over, awesome. These lights fit in your backpack. These lights fit in your pant pocket. Fantastic. The only problem is they only get so bright and you want to be able, you want to be able to get a good, bright enough light that can help create maybe a light the way this light is key lighting me because if I turn this off, like this whole scene looks like trash. But, but what do you do? You know, it's very tough to carry a big ass soft box around. So there's certain situations where obviously this is not under your control. You could light indoor ceremonies depending on if it, the church allows or if, you know, obviously if it's in a, in a hotel, it's fine. Uh, you can't light, you can't really do much for like outdoor weddings and like it's afternoon lighting and like it's really harsh lighting on all the guests and like depending on the angle, it's just, what can you do? Other than putting a big ass diffuser hanging, you know, somewhere else. And again, that is something that bigger movie productions, music video productions can do. We are run and gun. We need to get things done quickly. And this is just how I'm trying to bridge that lighting gap in the situations that we can. So let me show you this. I'm gonna turn off this key light right now. That light is off. So now all you have is that little backlighter over there. A nice room. It's not ideal, right? A little bit shadowy. You want a little more color here. Now I have turned on a light and it's not a typical light such as a big portal, you know, big light. It's not an, a huge LED light with a soft box. It's just like a small LED light that fits in my backpack that I'm literally blasting against the white wall of my house. And, and thankfully, most hotels, the ceilings are white. So you could actually bounce this light off the top of the ceiling. And this is how I've been trying to bridge the gap with lighting in terms of my wedding filmmaking and trying to get it to the level of higher end Hollywood productions, music video productions. And you're saying, well, Vu, you know, most time prep, the lighting looks fine. Not really, because sometimes you're trying to get, you know, you do have that window, but then sometimes you just got to fill in the other side a little bit more. This is when I usually use a light like this. I'll bounce it off the ceiling, bounce off the side, and it fills it in. And to be honest, this raises the production value. It raises the, imi it raises the image quality just a bit to at least separate you from just the standard wedding videographer douchebags. And the reason why I say this not to be mean, but wedding videographers, even till this day, with video being so popular, we are still at only maybe 15% of weddings. I ask all the photographers I work with um, on wedding days, and I always ask them, uh, you know, you go to photograph a wedding like 10 times, how many times out of those 10 times is there a videographer there? And they usually say probably one or two times. So that is where I'm getting my statistics from my local area, the photographers here, and what they're working with. So I'm gonna go tell you this right now. I'm gonna show you what the light is. I'm not sponsored by them. They don't pay me jack shit. I spent a lot of money on it. And I'm gonna show you the setup that I use to bring with me two weddings. But first I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna turn on the key light. 
So this here is the light I've been using. This is a Rotolite Neo 3. I spent my own money on it. I saw that it was portable, one, and it is bright as shit. This is the brightest, like, quote unquote, small portable light that you can buy. And it fits in my backpack, no problem. And I can pretty much carry it around everywhere with me. And use the Sony batteries. Lasts pretty much all day as long as you're not using it over 80%. And I actually use this during prep and I use it during uh, reception. You know, sometimes when I'm pack I packed up my other two lights already, I could actually use this to light like the reception dancing to give a little accent lighting to make it look better. I've even used some of the special effects. So this light does have special effects. So like I've used like the RGB switching so it keeps rotating through the, col the RGB uh, colors and it kind of gives a dance floor like this nicer party vibe because sometimes DJs don't bring any lighting or maybe the bride and groom didn't want to pay for it and I'm looking at the their like dance video and I'm kind of like it needs a little bit something more then I'll start putting the effects on this and it looks awesome and of course it's higher quality lighting a lot of times when DJs bring their color lights there's like flickering because their lighting is sometimes trash so that works for this um, and it has all these other crazy effects too and just to be clear with you there's not a review of this light it seems like it I'm just telling you how I'm bridging this gap. This light just happens to be how I'm doing it, which is incidentally, I'm talking about it and why I'm using it. Um, I'm try really trying to get away from like reviewing shit on this channel. Uh, and if I do talk about stuff, it's like this. Um, and to be honest, if you want to buy this light, have at it. And obviously I'm putting the links in the description below. Those are all the failed links. You appreciate me, you appreciate the channel. Goodbye from that link. And it helps me because I get a little bit of this kickback from that affiliate link. Okay? That is it. So, yeah, this is the light I've been using. And, it's, you know, it's quite simple. Battery goes in. You turn on the light. When it's 100%, the fan turns on. When 80%, the fan isn't on as um, crazy. But, yeah, you have full touch screen. Things of that nature. It goes from... 3,000 Kelvin all the way to 10,000 Kelvin. It's kind of odd, uh, you know, to go that high, but I think the reason why they did it was because at 5,600K, dead center, that is when this light is at its brightest. And I think they did it on purpose because they wanted to make sure that 5,600K, the most often used lighting temperature, is also the brightest. It also doubles up. This light could also double up as a flash. Uh, you know, you see a flash. You know, you could sync if your photographer uses a flash. Um, but I use it primarily for video, and all I really use this for is obviously some perception accent lighting. But primarily, I just blast the thing at a hundred percent during situations like prep, during situations like it's raining outside, or if it's nighttime outside and the couple wants some creative portraits. I'll carry this light around. I'll put it on um, this light stand and I could like bounce it off. And as you can see, if I want to fill in some shadows here, I bounce it off the wall, I get some fill. Uh, this is 5600K, 100%. If I want some additional lighting, just it's very subtle, but as you can see, it fills in quite nicely. Okay, um, and that's about it. And to make things easier for myself, <laughs> I do use, I carry around this light, little light stand from, again, I'm just telling you this because this is what I use to get things done, okay? I'm just using this Ulanzi carbon fiber light stand. It's about a hundred bucks or so, and it's very small. I could like stick it in, like tie it on to my backpack, carry it into the prep location it could also double up as a tripod for your camera so i do use this as a tripod also if i'm trying to do like ring shots and stuff like that um, i put a quick release plate on this which is the same quick release plate that i use um for my main tripods for my cameras so you know it's also just another small quick release for you know it's just small ulanzi quick release that you can pretty much install onto any tripod any light stand and you know it's as simple as it's just a little square quick release and you push it in and if you want you could lock it 
and now it's in place, it's not going anywhere. And then you can, you could also hit the unlock and to release it, just press the button, take it off. Put it back in your backpack, you're on your way. And the reason why I do this is, you know, sometimes you gotta set this up quick. And you know, sometimes if you all know, it's like, okay, bride is ready, time to go first look. I don't have time to like fumble around with my stuff. I need to be able to put it away quick so I could like be mobile. And so take this apart, stick it all in my backpack again. I'm off to first look and I'm ready to go. Um, and that's really what my setup has been. And you know, I keep this thing set up the whole time during reception, just in case I need it for whatever. Um, and it's been working uh, fantastic. Again, seems like a review of these products, it's not. This is just how I bridge the gap between wedding filmmaking and like higher Hollywood productions. And as I go along my career, uh, I'm trying to bridge the gap more and more, however way I can, without limiting myself to like how fast I can do things. Um, you know, how I could get quick shots in one take, um, things of that nature. And I think this is very important for all of us wedding filmmakers to consider going forward because I think a lot of people still don't understand um, how good wedding filmmaking can be. And even celebrities don't understand this. Um, I had the opportunity of filming Pink Sweat's uh, wedding. Um, he's a up and coming famous uh, R&B artist. He has his YouTube right now has almost 2 million subscribers. And he has amazing uh, music videos. You watch his music videos, they're filmed very well, lighting is immaculate. So uh, when I was hired to be his wedding filmmaker, I was very nervous. It's like, you know, I, I hope, uh, you know, he's not looking at my weddings, my wedding videos and comparing them to the music videos. And then in my mind, I was just like, you know what, like, why can't my wedding films look as good as his music videos? What can I do to like bridge that gap? Um, and lighting uh, was the uh, easiest, quickest thing to figure out. And um, yeah, and I think a lot of celebrities still don't know what wedding filmmakers are capable of because they probably look at the productions of, let's say, the commercials they shoot, in case of musicians, like the music videos they shoot. Maybe as an athlete, they see what the production goes into, like those promotional videos they have to shoot uh, for their team. And they're like, wow, like it takes this to get this amazing video production. And then maybe they can't see how wedding videography could be the same, you know? So if you ever watch like a lot of famous um, people's like wedding videos, they're actually really bad. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to mention like names and I'm not going to mention like who they hire, but whoever they hired, like, in my opinion, weren't great wedding videographers. And then so I think the athletes, you know, they have money, you know, they could pay for like a better videographer. I think they just don't know any better. I think they just don't know how good wedding video videography could be. And, um, you know, I think it's important to elevate all of us. And I think it's important for all of us to try to elevate our game, to change the minds of potential clients and to educate them about how good our, you know, films can be and how valuable they can be if they're done well. Too many clients are spending, you know, low dollar, thousand dollars or whatever on their wedding videographer. They're spending a thousand dollars on like a video they will only watch once because it's bad. And they just watch it once and it's like, okay, at least we have something. But they could spend a lot more, obviously, but then they'll watch that video multiple, multiple, multiple times. Okay? I actually already finished Pink Sweat's sneak peek film. Um, he had, they absolutely loved the film and they've told me they watched it over and over multiple times and they're gonna share it soon and then hopefully I'll also share it with you guys um, so yeah I uh, appreciate you watching I hope this is insightful I hope it was instructional helpful whatever motivating I don't know whatever as always guys if you like this content please subscribe to the channel and until next time lighten up literally
faith, hope, love. The greatest of these is love. Love always protects, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Do everything in love. Be completely humble and gentle as love is kind. Be patient as love is patient. Bearing with one another in love. With all humility and greatness, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Love does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love each other deeply. Love yesterday, today, and forever.